Praise to God from whom all blessings flow. With Holy Ghost joy in my heart, I want to welcome you to another exciting edition of City Impact Bible Study, the maiden one in the month of April 2021. So I want to say to you, peace to you, peace to your house, and peace to all that you have. Great peace to our beloved nation, Nigeria. April is an important month for us because it's the beginning of months that the Lord will manifest in three areas that it will be a month of three Gs for you. A month of God's grace, a month of God's glory, and a month of God's goodness in the name of Jesus. God will manifest his goodness in your life like never before. You will see his grace like never before. I will experience his goodness like never before in Jesus' mighty name. Now, I don't know for how long you have been praying. From beginning of the year or since last year, you have been trusting God for a particular thing and it has not manifested. And the more you prayed, the more it appeared as if the heaven above you is sealed. It's like a brass covering the entire space where you are offering prayers. Now, this is the word of the Lord for you. And we are taking that from Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 28, in the NIV version. Therefore, say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. None of my words will be delayed any longer. Whatever I say will be fulfilled, declares the sovereign Lord. For emphasis, I want to read it one more time. Therefore, say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, none of my words will be delayed any longer. Whatever I say will be fulfilled, declares the sovereign Lord. Therefore, I want to say to you by the spirit of the living God that you are stepping into your month of no delays, no more delays. It's your season of no more delays. I need to hear you say it. It's my season of no more delays. One more time. It is my season of no more delays in Jesus' mighty name. King of kings, Lord of lords, we thank you for another time in your presence. We thank you, Lord, because your words are yea and amen. Your word says, in your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Father, I want to experience your fullness tonight. I want to experience your joy tonight. I want to experience your impartation tonight. Father, in greater dimension, Lord, reach out to us tonight in Jesus' name. The entrance of your word brings light and it brings understanding to the simple. We receive the illumination of your word tonight and we decree and declare that by the time this CIBS is done, our lives will not remain the same. Thank you, Lord, because it's done. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, tonight, our subject of contemplation is behave yourself wisely in God's waiting room. I say it one more time. Behave yourself wisely in God's waiting room. Now, before we dive deeper into our study tonight, it is needful to examine the three component words in our subject of contemplation tonight. These are behave. The second one, wisely. And the third one, waiting room. Let us start by gaining the perspective of the Webster English Dictionary on the three words. To behave is to conduct oneself in accordance with the accepted norms of a society or a group. To behave is to act or conduct oneself in a specified way, especially towards others. So for example, you can say, oh, the man always behaved like a gentleman. Now, similar expressions could include acquit oneself, 
bear oneself, carry oneself, comport oneself, and deport oneself. The next important word is wisely. Wisely is something that is characterized by wisdom, marked by deep understanding, keen discernment, and a capacity for sound judgment. And the third and the final key component word or phrase, a waiting room. A waiting room is a building, or more commonly, a part of a building or a room where people sit or stand or until the event or appointment for which they are waiting begins. There are two types of waiting rooms. One is where individuals leave for appointments, one at a time. For example, in a doctor's office, in a hospital. The other is the waiting room where people live en masse, such as at the railway station, at the bus station, and at the airport. From the definitions we have considered, we can make a good deduction as to what behaving ourselves wisely in God's waiting room is. Simply, it is about conducting ourselves with wisdom, conducting ourselves with deep understanding, keen discernment, and assigned judgment. Now, while we are waiting for God's response to our request, to our prayers, to our desires for his divine intervention in the issues of life that will come up against. Please remember this. The word of the Lord came to us expressly to announce the nature of this year and what the good Lord has proposed to do in our lives. So I'll be listing what I call reminders. Among other things, we understand that in this year, we will reap where we have not bestowed labor. That what others are looking for will look for us. That our excessive labor will end. That in this year, we will be the right person at the right place at the right time, for the right reasons, and will get the right result. That what God has done for us, hitherto, will pale into insignificance compared to what he will do for us this year. That this is our year of full, complete, and total restoration. Therefore, more than any other year, the nature of this year and what God is, is determined to do in each of our lives puts us in God's waiting room. It puts us in a state of expectation. Don't forget this fact that expectation is the breeding ground for divine interventions and miracles. Have you observed that waiting is an integral part of our lives? Most of times, we wait for one thing or another. Now, let me just give us examples of the things we wait for. We wait on the Lord for guidance and direction. We wait on the Holy Spirit for illumination and direction. We wait on the Holy Spirit for revelation. We wait for the right time to start a family. We wait for the good Lord to bring the right man or right woman into our lives as husband or as wife. We wait on the, on the Lord for the fruit of the womb. We wait on the Lord to guide us to nurture our children in his fear and wisdom. We wait on the Lord to see our children succeed in life. We wait on the Lord to roll away every affliction troubling or ravaging our lives. We wait on the Lord to intervene either in mild or critical medical challenges. We wait to see good returns on our investments. We wait at the bus stops, train stations, and departure lunch for our land, train, or air trips. 
We wait for our medical test results. We wait for our examination results. We wait for admission into institutions. Now, you will agree with me that without any doubt, the list of things we wait for is unbelievably endless. I pray that the Almighty God will give you an answer of peace as you come to wait on him in Jesus' mighty name. I must say this very clearly, that waiting is one of the hardest tasks of our Christian life. Even when we wait for patience, when we pray for patience, as we wait on the Lord, we still pray to God and say, Lord, give me patience, but give it to me now. Lord, give me patience, but give it to me now. I'm sure we understand the, that fact that God does not respond to emotional blackmail or manipulation. When we are in God's waiting room, it will appear that God, our maker, our helper, the amen to our prayers, has hidden himself. Now, don't take my word for it. Let's read from Isaiah chapter 45, verse 15. Truly, you are God who hide yourself, O God of Israel, the Savior. Let's read again from Isaiah chapter 8, verse 17. And I will wait on the Lord who hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. Now, when we're in God's waiting room, is the most delicate period of our lives. This is when saints of God look back from their plow. They look for alternatives and disqualify themselves from the race. This is when men and women and women's consciences are seared as with hot iron. This is when men and women read greed into God's creed. This is when they say with reckless abandon that heaven helps those who help themselves. The importance of waiting is clearly emphasized in many Bible verses. Let's start by reading from Psalm 62. We read verses 1 to 2 and verses 5 to 7. Truly, my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not but greatly moved. My soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Amen. Now, let's read Psalm 27 verse 14 from the Amplified Version. It's, it reads, Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage and let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes, wait for and hope for and expect the Lord. Amen. Psalm 37 verse 34 again. Amplified. Wait for and expect the Lord and keep and heed his way and he will exhort you to inherit the land in the end when the wicked are cut off you shall see it. Amen. Amen. Psalm 25 verse 3. Yes, let none who trust and wait hopefully and look for you be put to shame or be disappointed. Let them be ashamed who forsake the right or deal treacherously without cause. 
Amen. And finally, let's read from Psalm 37, verses 7 to 9. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. For evil doers shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, shall, they shall inherit the earth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, there are so many Bible passages that focus on waiting on God. Praise the Lord. I want us to quickly look at examples or consider examples of people who waited on the Lord. Amen. Now, we'll be considering three testaments. Three. We're drawing examples from three testaments. The first one is the Old Testament. The second testament is the New Testament. And the third testament is the Now Testament. Amen. The first one is Abraham. Abraham waited for the promise of his son to be fulfilled. Let's read from Hebrews chapter 6, verse 15. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. After he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Now, we know this very well. That Abraham was promised an heir through his wife Sarah, despite her old age. This period of waiting lasted for 25 unbroken years. Sarah did eventually give birth to Isaac, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. In Genesis 21, verse 1, we are not reading it. Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. He trusted in God to keep the promise that his own son will be, or his own offspring will be numerous like the stars in the sky and sand on the seashore. That can be found in Genesis 22, verse 17. The next person that waited on God was Joseph. Joseph was waiting in prison for a purpose. But at the end of the day, God vindicated him. And this is his, his, his testimony statement. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. But as for you, that's as for the brothers, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Now, the story of Joseph is well known to us. Joseph was his father's favorite son, which caused his brothers to hate him. He also had dreams which showed him ruling over his family, and this father angered his brothers. And they wanted to kill him, but reason prevailed and sold him uh, to, 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 this, to, to the slave drivers. One event led to, led to another, and he ended up uh, in prison for no, for, for, for no offense at all. Now, I want us to read from Genesis chapter 40, from verse 12 to 17. Now, before I read this, let me give us this perspective. Now, he was imprisoned for an offense he did not commit, but God knew what he was doing and arranged uh, for an event to happen that, of course, will eventually take him out of the prison. Genesis chapter 40, verses 12 to 15. And Joseph said to him, this is the interpretation. This is uh, the interpretation of the, the, the cup bearer. The three branches are three days. Now, within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your place. And you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner, 
when you are his butler. But remember me when it is well with you. And please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. For indeed, I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews. And also, I have done nothing here that they should put me into the dungeon. Praise the Lord. Now, we, we, we can recall vividly what happened. The court bearer forgot totally about Joseph. And two, year, two years passed before Pharaoh needed his own dream to be interpreted. That was when the cup bearer then remembered Joseph uh, who interpreted his own dreams in prison. And from one thing to, all, to the other, uh, God helped Joseph. He moved from prison to power and eventually God was glorified. But all through, he had to wait on God. The third character very quickly was Job. Job waited through suffering. As a matter of fact, uh, we, we, we read in James chapter 5, verse 11, about the steadfastness of, of, of uh, Job, Job, despite the fact that uh, he had terrible afflictions, he had terrible encounters with death and so many things, business failure, but God saw Job through the, 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 the very terrible times. Very quickly, James chapter 5, verse 11. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Now, God blessed Job abundantly after his time of struggle, doubling what he had, what he had before. Job truly ex exemplifies how to endure suffering with a firm trust in God. Now, another example is David. David waited to be appointed as a king. Let's read from Psalm 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord and inclined to me and heard my cry. Now, Saul was made the first king of Israel. However, he rebelled against God and God rejected him as king. We can find this in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 1 to 10. We'll not be reading it because of our time. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 1 to 10. At the time God spoke through his prophet Samuel, it was revealed to Samuel that God's anointed king was David. We can find that in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 12 to 13. However, David was not made king for some time. He became prominent in Israel and so became envious and set out to destroy him. Despite being relentlessly pursued by Saul, David was faithful to God and eventually he waited to be made king. Praise the Lord. Now, another character in the Bible who waited for breakthrough in prayer was Daniel. Let's read from Daniel chapter 9 verse 3. Then I set my face towards the Lord to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. David's persistence in fasting and prayer is an important example of faith and trust in God. In Daniel chapter 9, we read David's honest prayer before God. Furthermore, we read in Daniel chapter 10 verse 12, an angel of the Lord came to him and said, do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and have come in response to them. Praise the Lord. So he waited on God he persisted in the place of prayer and God gave him an answer of peace. The examples we have considered so far are drawn from the Old Testament. Now let's pick two examples from the New Testament before we go into the Now Testament. Now, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, he waited on, on the Father to start his ministry. 
He waited. Let's read from Luke chapter 3, verses 21 to 23. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, the son of Heli. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, the public ministry of Jesus did not begin until he was 30 years old. The following three years of his life were filled by living alongside his disciples to prepare them for when he would no longer be with them. It was a time of going from place to place, fulfilling prophecies that were made about him and for telling people to repent and believe for God's kingdom had come near. We can find that in Mark chapter 1, verse 15. And we can also look at uh, the, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the place of waiting. Let's read from Acts chapter 1, from verses 4 to 8. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now, that was the express uh, instruction. They were to wait until the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. For how long they were to wait for, they had no clues. Now, let's go straight into Acts chapter 2. We'll read the first four verses. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise the Lord. And so they waited for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit just as instructed, just as commanded. If they had not waited, the Holy Spirit would not have manifested. Praise the Lord. Now, those are two examples from the New Testament. Let's now go into now testament. The testament that we can see. The testament that is within, within our environment. Now, I'm going to ask uh, a sister, a beloved sister in our church. Uh, I'm going to speak on her behalf. Her name is Sister Grace Olubukola Dada. This daughter of Zion waited on God for 25 years, for the fruit of the womb. And while she was waiting on God, she refused to wear the barren tag. She refused to be called barren for the 25 years. She judged God faithful that God is able to do what he has promised. 
Now, she said that every time the man of God made prophetic declarations, she would latch on to it and say, this is for me. And she told me that her favorite scripture was in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. I'm going to read that part again. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. So she believed in the Lord God for her to be established. And she believed the prophet for her to prosper. And every time she was down in her spirit, she would read from 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. Now, David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his own sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord is God. So Sister Olubukola Dada strengthened herself in the Lord for 25 solid years. As a matter of fact, there was a great miracle wrought by God in her life. Now she was pregnant with twins for four months and she didn't know. And during that period, she had acute malaria. And she was being treated, acute, uh, acute malaria that required um, uh, antibiotics. And she was being treated with antibiotics for very long. And when eventually two different doctors confirmed that she was pregnant, she had to pray to God that, God, I waited on you for 25 unbroken years. These children that you have given to me must not be deformed. And to the glory of God, none of the twins was deformed. And they are growing by leaps and bands to the glory of God. Praise the Lord. That's the first person in the, in the Now Testament. The second person in the Now Testament is uh, our well-esteemed elder Abimbolo Ladako. At some point in his business uh, career, he had a challenge. He was duped of a huge fortune. Huge fortune. His business was badly affected. And instead of mourning, mourning, complaining, he waited earnestly on the Lord and encouraged himself with the following five scriptures. They are scriptures of timeless grace. Let's read first from Psalm 34, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So this was the first scripture Edaladako dependent on. That my affliction may be many, but the afflictions of the righteous, even if they are many, the Lord delivers him out of them all. The second scripture that he depended on when he had that challenge, when he was duped and his business collapsed, uh, is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. The third scripture that I depended on is found in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. The soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. Again, it depended on Proverbs 4 verse 18. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. And finally, John chapter 3, verse 27. 
John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. And so he knew that he could not be helped by anyone except heaven makes that available to him. The next thing we want to consider is how to wait on the Lord. Now, I must say to us very clearly, the period we spend waiting on the Lord is not a period of inaction. It's, a, it's not a period of blabbing, accusing God of slowness, of abandonment. It's not a period to throw temper tantrums. Rather, it is a period we should spend actively praying to God for intervention, for deliverance, for strength, and to give us an answer of peace. Now, the first way to wait on the Lord is to remain in constant touch with God by seeking him through endless prayer. So the first way to wait on the Lord is to seek God through earnest prayer. While waiting on God, pray. Pray. I say again, pray. Praying is a wonderful way to communicate with God. And as with any relationship, constant communication breeds closeness, intimacy, and comfort. Praying fills you with peace and strengthens your faith. Praying is an important means of holding God to his promise. Failure to pray while waiting on God is one reason why we sometimes wait without success. It is a place of prayer you can ask God to reveal to you what you are waiting for and the strength and courage to wait until the answer comes. Praise the Lord. Now, let's, let's read from Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. It reads, Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things you do not know. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12. Then you will call upon me and you will come and pray to me and I will hear and heed you. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Amen. And in um, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, we guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. Psalm 40 verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord and inclined to me and heard my cry. Amen. Amen. Now, the importance of prayer in difficult times is clearly demonstrated in Acts chapter 12. In verse 1, we read that King Herod laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. James, John's brother, one of the original 12 disciples, was killed by sword. Peter, one of Jesus' closest disciples, and a major leader in the early church, was arrested and imprisoned. The members of the Jerusalem church responded to this distressing news in what the Bible describes in verse 5 as earnest prayer. God heard these prayers. Now, after obtaining his freedom from the Jerusalem dungeon with the help of an angel, in verse 12, we see that Peter heads 
to the house of John Mark. There he finds many gathered together and pleading with God in fervent prayer on his behalf. Praise the Lord. It is not worthy that members of Jerusalem could rightly become distressed, they could panic or sit down to mourn their slim brother. Rather, they settled down to pray earnestly to God. Now, the next way to wait on God is by seeking spiritual strength from him. Seek spiritual strength from God. While in God's waiting room, we can be overwhelmed by fear, desperation, and utter helplessness. It is imperative, therefore, to seek for spiritual strength from God. The spiritual strength we receive from the Lord will sustain us greatly. Please don't ever forget this fact, that when you are waiting on God, he is the only one who can strengthen you. It is him alone. It is in him alone you can find strength. Psalm 31 verse 24. Be, be of good courage and it shall strengthen your heart. All you hope in the Lord. Amen. Psalm 27 verse 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. The next thing to do when you are waiting on God is to refrain from unprofitable fear, doubt, and worry. Now, the standard response of many people in God's waiting room is to exhibit fear, doubt, and anxiety. This is not profitable at all. This can only heighten our attention and put us in a state of helplessness and hopelessness that God cannot do what he has promised. In such instances, Kronos time is elevated far above Kairos grace. The fear of time grips the souls of many people in the waiting room. But as much as possible, we should rely on God to strengthen us and take away fear from our hearts. In Psalm 56, verses 3 to 4, Psalm 56, whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear. What can flesh do to me? Praise God. Psalm 46, verses 1 to 3. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So when you are in God's waiting room, please don't forget this. It's very important. Refrain from needless and unprofitable fear, doubt, worry, and anxiety. Again, when you are in God's waiting room, saturate yourself with God's word. Saturate yourself with God's word. Why in God's waiting room? It is needful to study and meditate on God's word. One way to fight and defeat fear and worry is by immersing ourselves in God's word. Affirm God's word audibly. Positive affirmations work best when we quote the direct promises of God from his written and settled word. As we wait upon the Lord, we are to grow in the knowledge of him and his commands for us. However, this can only be achieved by dwelling on his word. Amen. Amen. Let's read from the popular 
uh, Bible passage, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all, to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Amen. Amen. Now, when we are in God's waiting room, please note all of this. Study about God's goodness. Read about the wonderful things that God has done. Spend quality time to count your blessings. Spend quality time to meditate on God's love. Now, spend quality time to study about God's power. This will help you to see that God is able to solve any problem you face and is able to give you strength to face any problem. Dwell on God's promises. Dwell on the things that God has promised. For example, dwell on what God says he will do when you are weak. We can find this in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. We'll not read because of our time. Uh, and we can find it again in Psalm 27, verses 13 to 14. And then what God says, what God say when we are weary, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. What did God say when uh, we are alone? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Now, please do not forget this. That the written promises of God are ours for the taking. And they are the currency of exchange at the throne of grace. That is the reason God commanded us to bring forth our strong reasons. What are the strong reasons? The fact that God exalts his word above his name. And so when we speak those words, not only is our faith increased, but we also remind God of his promises and register our faith in him at the throne of grace. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamp and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love themselves to death. I will read it again. They overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the lamp and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. So affirm God's word audibly. That's the way to defeat fear. That's the way to put enemy away. And I trust God that God's word will continually dwell in you, with you, and through you. In Jesus' name. Another thing to do while you are in God's waiting room is praise God in faith. Praise him in faith. While in God's waiting room, make it a habit to praise God elaborately for what he has done, for what he's doing, even for the things he has not done. There is no better way to express your faith than thanking God for the things he has not done. Or for thanking God for the things that have not manifested physically. Amen. Let's read Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. It will take this kind of faith for you to praise God because you have an assurance even for what you have not seen. Romans chapter 4, very quickly, chapter 17 to 20. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and call those things which do not exist as though they did. 
who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall, our, so, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver, waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And finally, while you are in God's waiting room, exercise great patience. Exercise great patience. Now, patience is described as the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, problems or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. Anyone who has chosen to wait on God must do it with unparalleled patience. Praise the Lord. Now, patience and quietness form an integral part of waiting. In God's waiting room, patience strengthens us to wait on God in hope. Amen. Let's read from Psalm 62, verse 5. My soul, wait silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. Amen. Psalm 130, Psalm 130 verses 5 to 6. <clears throat> I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word, I do hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. Yes, more than those who watch for the morning. Praise the Lord. Now, I can't forget one of the Shakespeare's classics that I read in school. This particular one is Macbeth. Now, in Macbeth, we have a very brave Scottish general named Macbeth. Macbeth received a prophecy from the tree of witches that one day he will become the king of Scotland. But consumed by ambition and spurred to action by his wife, Macbeth murdered King Duncan and took the Scottish throne for himself. But how did he end? He was wrecked with guilt and paranoia because he could not exercise patience for what eventually will become his. Praise the Lord. Now, as we round off, these are my final words. Now, the theme for tonight's Bible study sounds very much like what we have in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 5. And David went out, whithersoever Saul sent him, and behaved himself wisely. And Saul set him over the men of war, and was accepted in the sight of all the people. Also in the sight of Saul's servants. Praise the Lord. Now, because David behaved himself wisely, the Bible says he was accepted in the sight of, of all the people and in the sight of Saul's servants. So when we behave as ourselves wisely in God's waiting room, we'll be acceptable before him, even before the people. Again, in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 14 and 15, and David behaved himself wisely, in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. Praise the Lord. Now, when David behaved himself wisely, the Bible says the Lord was with him. And Saul, his arch enemy, was also afraid of him. Please know, and this is very important, that just as you and I are waiting on God, the almighty God, the creator of all things, our maker, is also waiting for us too, and for very good reason. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. And therefore, the Lord 
earnestly waits, expecting, looking, and longing to be gracious to you. And therefore, he lifts himself up that he may have mercy on you and show you loving kindness and show loving kindness to you. For the Lord is a God of justice, blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied are all those who earnestly wait for him, who expect and look and long for him, for his victory, his favor, his love, his peace, his joy, and his matchless unbroken companionship. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the Lord waits on us so that he can do us well. Praise the Lord. And finally, Romans chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. All around us, we observe a pregnant creation. The difficult times of pain throughout the world are simply birth pangs. But it's not only around us. It's within us. The Spirit of God is arousing within, arousing us within. We are also feeling the bad pangs. These sterile and barren bodies of ours are yearning for full deliverance. That's why waiting does not diminish us anymore than waiting diminishes our pregnant mother. We enlarge in the waiting. We, of course, don't see what is enlarging us, but the longer we wait, the larger we become, and the more joy, and the more joyful our expectancy. Praise the Lord. Please know this as I round off. Waiting does not diminish us. Just as waiting does not diminish a pregnant woman. Please let us wait on God, and I'm sure it will perfect all that concerns us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, waiting can be for a short or long season, but God remains the King of kings and the Lord of lords through it all. Amen. God bless you real good in Jesus' name. Whatever you are waiting on God for, I pray in all earnestness tonight, the Almighty God will give you an answer of peace in Jesus' mighty name. And you will sing a song of joy of deliverance, of freedom for that which God has done in Jesus' name.